Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. We respond in, to people in a way that is best. Allah commanded in the Quran, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Say to the people that which is positive and good and wholesome. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to greet someone with a smile on your face is a sadaqah. So Islam is not a religion that tells us to be anti-sociable, but Allah has the most rights for us to worship him. And we cannot condone or endorse any form of disobedience. And the worst form of disobedience is making shik with him. So if someone were to say, Merry Christmas, there's no way in the world that the Muslim understands Christmas in any shape, form, or fashion as being merry because it's calling to shirk and kufr and it's calling to having and setting up partners along with Allah and ascribing to him sons and daughters and wives and other than that. And this is something that the heavens are about to rent asunder and they split. The mountains are about to fall down because the people say, اِتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ Verily, Allah has taken a child. So the response of the heavens and the earth and the mountains is that they tremble out of fear at such a statement. So they are a creation of Allah and we are a creation of Allah. So if someone were to give you that uh, uh, greeting, it's your job to come up with a formula and the best thing to say not to be disrespectful, but never respond back by saying a Merry Christmas to you. And thank you very much. You come up with what needs to be said, inshallah, to get the job done without being apologetic or negative or disrespectful. And Allah is a'la in alam. If a person's parents, their relatives, they celebrate Christmas and they invite you over to participate in that celebration, that it is not permissible to find yourself in that place. In our religion, we have been commanded to avoid people and places where Allah is being disobeyed. We can't find ourselves in that place, perhaps perchance, Yom al Qiyam is established at that time, and that's what you're going to be judged by. Perhaps perchance, death may come to you and you're in the middle of celebrating that which is in disobedience to Allah and he hates it. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the curse of Allah is upon the table where khamr is consumed. Shut up. The curse of Allah is on the place where the khamr is squeezed. The curse of Allah is upon the one who carries the khamr. The curse of Allah is upon the one and they're all equal because of this issue of al-khamr. The same issue holds true with the riba, that Allah Ta'ala has cursed the one who takes it, the one who gives it, the place where it's being agreed to. So all of that goes to show we have to avoid the places and the people who are openly disobeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But in saying this, being a person who have relatives who are non-Muslims, I am not suggesting that we are disrespectful or that we're even anti-sociable. But we do it in a play, play in a way that is wise. Itfa billati hiya ahsan, as Allah said. Push back in a way that is best and most appropriate. And Allah is a'la and a'lam. It's not permissible for Muslims to celebrate Christmas in any shape, form, or fashion. And that's because the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he found some of the companions in al Medina celebrating some of the celebrations that they used to do in Jahiliya, he said, In Allah minhuma. Allah has replaced the celebrations that you used to do with that which is better. The Eid of Ramadan and the Eid of Al Hajj. We also have the Aqiqa, we have the Walima for the Nikah and other celebrations that are sanctioned by the religion. But part of al-walawa bara is that we have to make al-bara'a and separate ourselves from kufr and shirk and from the people who are practitioners of kufr and shirk and the ibadat, the forms of worship that come from kufr and shirk and the ayad, the celebrations that are steeped and connected and they originate from kufr and shirk. Not to do so would be a case of a person displaying weak understanding and weak application of 
the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would advise you to go to YouTube and you can find some really informative and beneficial um, talks breaking down where all of this stuff comes from paganism. For an example, the hidden meaning or hidden history of Christmas by one of the elders in El Islam, Brother Abdul Hakim Quick. The Quran has mentioned in detail the birth of Isa ibn Maryam, and the authentic Sunnah has also come with a hadith that supplement that. One of the ayat of the Quran where Allah Ta'ala mentions, Inna mathala Isa inda Allahi ka mathali Adama khalaquhu min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun al haqqu min rabbika fala takun min al mumtarin. Verily, the example of Isa to Allah Azawajal is like the example of Adam. Allah created Adam from dirt and then he said, be, and he became. And then Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the truth is from your Lord and this is the truth. So do not be like those people who are in doubt. So we believe that Isa was born and he had an immaculate conception. No father was on the scene. And the fact that there's a man by the name of Joseph that was put inside of the story in Al-Islam, we don't accept that. We categorically reject it because we haven't been told that. We just believe that the angel Ar-Ruh Al-Amin came to his mother, Maryam Batula, the virgin lady, and as a miracle and a sign, Allah Azawajal allowed her to get married as Allah Ta'ala is, فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ He does whatever he wants. وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ And Allah is able and capable of doing anything and everything that he wants to do. He created Adam from dirt. And from Adam he created Hawa. And from Maryam he created Isa ibn Maryam. صلوات الله وسلامه عليه. And Allah is A'la in A'lam.